Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Plan B here on Twitter, Max Payne equals never below $20,000 ever again. He posted a, uh, a poll on his Twitter account just for fun. He wanted to see who thought uh, Bitcoin would go back down to 20000 again, and who thinks we'll never see 20000 again. And it's about uh, two-thirds, one-third, two-thirds are pessimistic, I guess, uh, thinking that Bitcoin uh, will go back to $20,000 again. And about 35% think that we will not see $20,000 again. Now, an interesting poll, considering we are seeing the Bitcoin price up to $24,000, it has been steadily increasing over the last uh, two months or so, ever since we saw this bottom back here in uh, about mid-June. Uh, we are now in mid-August, and so uh, we have seen an upward trend for Bitcoin. However, we are not out of the woods yet. Peter Schiff also giving his uh, two cents here. Now, he's biased, of course. Just to put the Bitcoin rally into perspective, take a look at this chart. He says, the pattern remains very bearish. There's both a double top and a head and shoulders top. There's a rising wedge forming below the neckline. At a minimum, support will be tested below $10,000. Look out below. And so uh, here is the chart that Peter Schiff uh, decided to post on Twitter and uh, lots being quite critical of him, like 360 Trader here. You win grand prize for the worst TA I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and uh, even Moon Lambo here, I believe, uh, yeah, he chimed in as well. How much time must pass before you stop saying all crypto is going to zero? In 20 years, will you still be saying crypto is nothing but a fad in a bumble? Or would you eventually admit you were mistaken and rethink your perspective? In 20 years, crypto will be 33 years old. With each passing year, your perspective looks increasingly silly. That's why I'm asking, if I were you, at some point I'd look inward and ask what I'm not understanding about the adoption and long-term viability of crypto. So, you know, some here in the XRP community just thinking Peter Schiff's assessment um, a little immature. I mean, he is not wrong in terms of uh, just laying out the technicals. But, you know, there's so much more than meets the eye on the crypto chart. To his point, I mean, in the last bear market, uh, we did go down as low as about 70%, 70 and a half percent. And, um, you know, at this time, a lot of us thought this was the bottom and that uh, it was really not going to go down much further than that. We did have a few fake outs like this, right? And uh, even here we thought, okay, the market's going back up. Maybe this is going to be the launch off point. And then sure enough, it wasn't until November of 2018, the market dumped again, bringing this market down another, what was it, another 15%. Uh, so from down 70% to down about 84%. So down 14 more percent from this point. And uh, this was max pain for a lot of us here. This is uh, also when I bought up a lot of my Bitcoin position. I was really happy about that trade. Um, and now we're kind of seeing something similar, right? From the top here, right? Going back down, even if we were to pull this down to the bottom of the market, 74%. And if we were to just take a look at where we have seen former resistance in the past at this level here, which would bring uh, the price of Bitcoin to roughly 13,700 give or take uh, that would bring us down to about 80% so a similar possibility again I would not be surprised if we do see Bitcoin continue to go down further before a massive uptick I mean guys we've seen it in the past uh, it is not unprecedented so uh, just something to keep an eye on. We've got XRP here right now trading at about 37.1. So just following the market. Conversely, you know, if we do see that for Bitcoin, we could see XRP even go back down to the 20 cent level, give or take. Again, though, this would be a prime opportunity for buying any of your altcoins, any cryptocurrency for that matter, because, uh, you know, we're still seeing a spec market where all cryptos are following the king currency. Jamie Dimon is also telling his wealthy clients that there's a chance the U.S. is heading into something worse than a recession. And so, you know, right now we're seeing the crypto market following other markets. And so could Jamie Dimon's warning extend to crypto holders? Well, Jamie Dimon told wealthy clients there is a chance the U.S. is heading into something worse than a recession. So in quotes, notice that something worse than a recession, CEO Jamie Dimon talked to some of JP Morgan's wealthy clients on Tuesday. He was said to have put the chances of a harder recession and of something worse at 20 to 30%. He called the current risk storm clouds, an apparent downgrade from his June hurricane warning. So to give you guys some context here, uh, he was on a call on Tuesday and uh, he said that the economy was strong, 
But the storm clouds were on the horizon, including federal monetary policy, Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, and rising oil prices. So all things that uh, you know we really don't have much control over. Uh, the categorization is an apparent downgrade from uh, from Diamond's previous comments in June, where he warned of an economic hurricane. So back in June, he was uh, assuming this was going to be much worse. Although consumers' balance sheets are in good shape, he says they're taking a very conservative approach. The CEO said uh, to have estimated the chances of a soft landing to be about at uh, 10% and the probability of a harder landing or mild recession to be closer to 20 to 30%. He also reportedly admitted a 20 to 30% chance of a harder recession and a 20 to 30% chance of something worse than that. So not really committing to a uh, to an outlook there. Diamond had originally used the storm cloud metaphor to describe the U.S. economy back in April, but his outlook grew more dire in June. Here's a quote. I'm going to change the storm clouds out there. Look, I'm an optimist. I said there were, uh, I said there are storm clouds. There are big storm clouds. It's a hurricane. He said at the Bernstein conference on June 1st, adding, you better brace yourself. JP Morgan is bracing ourselves and we're going to be very conservative with our balance sheet. Back in June, he said, right now, things are kind of sunny. Things are doing fine. Everyone thinks the Fed can handle this. That hurricane is right out there and down the road. It's coming our way. We just don't know if it's a minor one or Superstorm Sandy or Andrew or something like that. So that was his outlook in June. He's still saying that we could be facing a harder recession or something worse. So, um, you know, they're being conservative with their balance sheet. Michael Branch also bringing this to our attention. Something interesting with regards to BlackRock, okay? Now, we know usually these companies tend to do is they buy up large quantities of, uh, you know, the cryptocurrencies that have good fundamentals, that have history, uh, you know, in some cases, real world utility, uh, I'm sure checks a box on their uh, decision sheet. Well, here, BlackRock's crypto address had only one token that almost no one knew about. I found this interesting because of that particular choice. So according to Santiment, the address associated with BlackRock has recently gotten rid of their only holding which is not a mainstream cryptocurrency, but a relatively small energy web token. Okay, energy web token was placed 190 or 189th in the top cryptocurrency sorted by market cap, which is why it is considered a relatively small token, and also why most of the crypto community was surprised to see it only on BlackRock's wallet. Uh, and guys, here's a, a, a quote from Santimate here. Energy web token has been on quite a journey this past week as BlackRock's only address holding 1 million or more of the EWT exited. Our last insight covers whale activity, dormant token movement, and volume rises, and plenty more. The EWT token is the operational token of the Energy Web blockchain, which is a virtual machine designed for the support and development of the energy sector. The project was launched back in June of 2019 with the foundation behind the project. The project's goal is to allow developers to build decentralized applications and solutions for the relatively alienated from the blockchain industry energy sector. Interesting choice for BlackRock, right? EWT token, something that, again, we haven't really heard too much about. And as we take a look at coin market cap, uh, just bringing up EWT, ranked uh, at the time of this recording, 191 on the list. Right now trading at about $4.02. Just to get a better idea of what it is, uh, EWT is the operational token behind the energy web chain, a blockchain-based virtual machine designed to support and further application development of the energy sector, as that uh, article mentioned. It aims to bring diversity to the energy sector by allowing developers to create decentralized apps or dApps. Uh, the virtual machine has the potential to benefit actors from all areas of energetics, including grid operators, software developers, and vendors. Now, you know, as this world moves into a very, very different place than it was pre-pandemic, energy is, um, in my opinion, going to be a very important commodity. And so, you know, I guess this begs the question, which blockchains are going to um, be more prominent within the energy sector? Uh, it is a good indication. I mean, BlackRock's obviously got their thumb on the pulse here. It is a good indication of uh, likely where uh, energy blockchains are going and what particular cryptocurrencies might be beneficial and might be widely accepted for those particular use cases. I found this to be quite an odd article. You know, I don't usually delve into these other types of coins that uh, big companies like BlackRock is holding, but you know, this one stuck out and it really does paint a picture of this fact that, you know, there's somebody at the helm of these companies, somebody is making these decisions, realizing that, you know, it's not just all Bitcoin, it's not just Ethereum, it's not just the top 10, but there are going to be other cryptocurrencies that do change minds. And so, you know, maybe this EWT token is something to be paying attention to. 
Um, wanted to keep moving, guys, because I also saw this. Raul Powell, who I mentioned in yesterday's video as well. Okay, Raul Powell is saying the market is virtually at its bottom. There's a 70% chance that we have seen the bottom. I will link that uh, video up here if you guys didn't catch that. What he's also saying, though, with regards to the cryptocurrency market specifically, the merge will make Ethereum even more attractive to institutional investors, okay? Recently, former Goldman Sachs executive Raul Powell explained why, for investors, Ethereum remains the safest, easiest allocation. Prior to founding Macroeconomic and Investment Strategy Research Service Global Macro Investor in 2005, Powell co-managed the GLG, Global Macro Fund in London, for global asset management firm, GLG Partners. So just giving you guys a little bit of history. He says Ethereum's merge hard fork, which is when the Ethereum network is making the transition from proof of work to proof of stake, is expected to take place around September the 15th. Now, to put things into context, again, September the 15th, that merge is happening, well, if it's on time, of course, uh, and that's not too far away. That is about a month away now. So September 15th would bring us in and around here-ish. Okay, some are saying that we could still see another drop before we really start to move to the upside. Late 2022, early 2023, this is where we're going to see the shift. So this all kind of happens to be coinciding. Oh, and this is the XRP chart, but uh, you know, the entire crypto market is looking quite similar. This is uh, the total market cap here. So um, just to throw those markers back on here, mid-September, would be in and around here. We could possibly see the market rebound further down. I mean, we we really don't know. I mean, we could still see it drop further before it rebounds up. But again, that timeline, early 2023, late 2022, the sweet spot in and around here. Many crypto analysts are projecting this same timeline. So, you know, it is interesting to see that uh, all these updates are also occurring in and around this time frame. So end of quarter three, 2022, Mohit Sorut saying Ethereum protocol merge is the grandest crypto narrative ever since Bitcoin was created and crypto came into being. Just amazed to see that most participants are sleeping on it. Um, now, I know the XRP community is likely not too interested in anything Ethereum related. I mean, uh, we now have a biased perspective. Uh, of course, there's a Ripple SEC case and uh, all the reasons why we think the SEC should be investigating Ethereum. And so maybe there's that bitter taste in our mouths. But the fact of the matter remains, you know, if you take that away from us as a community, and you just look at the crypto space uh, with a clean lens. Ethereum is obviously the number two cryptocurrency by market cap. So, you know, investors are going to be paying attention to what is happening on the Ethereum blockchain. And to Raul Powell's point here, uh, more interest will likely be driven to the Ethereum blockchain from an investor standpoint because of this merge. So the merge represents the joining of the existing execution layer of Ethereum, uh, which is uh, its new proof of stake consensus layer, the beacon chain. It eliminates the need for energy intensive mining and instead secures the network using staked ETH. A truly exciting step in realizing the Ethereum vision, more scalability, security, and sustainability. It's important to remember that initially the beacon chain shipped separately from mainnet ethereum mainnet with all its accounts balances smart contracts and blockchain state continues to be a secured by proof of work even while beacon chain runs in parallel uh, using proof of stake the approach merge is when these two systems finally come together and proof of work is replaced permanently by proof of stake some other reasons why uh investors might like this okay just down here uh as reported by the daily hodl pal said a lot of institutions wrongly didn't like Bitcoin because of ESG, environmental, social, and governance concerns. Proof of stake gets rid of that. Additionally, Ethereum now has a yield, so that's something that institutions love. So now you need to make one asset allocation decision, which is, I believe, in this Web 3.0 technology world. Uh, so where do you allocate, Bitcoin or Ethereum? It's going to be Ethereum. Why? Because you're going to get something between a six to ten percent yield. So that's extraordinary. So he's just uh, you know analyzing this from an investor's perspective. All those fundamentals that investors like. And so you know they're going to allocate. I mean these guys got a lot of money, so they're going to allocate money to many different projects. Um, and he's just stating the case for Ethereum. That's the safest, easiest allocation, he says. That happens to be Ethereum. Now, other early stage tokens, whether it's Solana or AVAX or whatever, are earlier on in the adoption curve. So you get that accelerated phase, so they'll probably outperform. Now, conversely, we also have this opinion from Kevin O'Leary. Will Ethereum flip Bitcoin? Kevin O'Leary says sovereign wealth funds will determine top crypto by market cap. Prominent venture capitalist Kevin O'Leary believes a certain group of deep-pocketed investors will dictate whether Bitcoin remains the top crypto asset 
by market cap. So guys like O'Leary and Raul Powell, they are realizing, you know, more money is coming into this market. And, uh, you know, the big guys, they are really going to dictate where these coins fall. Okay, Bitcoin is number one by market cap now. We've heard a fairly convincing argument as to why investors may uh, invest more into Ethereum. Well, let me continue with what Kevin O'Leary says. In a recent installment of Crypto Banter, uh, Kevin O'Leary said that he has a hard time believing that Ethereum will usurp Bitcoin and become the king cryptocurrency. So Kevin O'Leary is saying, nah, uh, uh, Bitcoin is going to stay number one. He says, when I talk to sovereign wealth, I don't care if it's Norway or the UAE or Saudi, they want Bitcoin. They have not got to the analysis that we've just gone through. They want the proxy of Bitcoin and they want that volatility. If Ethereum becomes the default platform for other digital assets, that will help. But in the immediate term, the demand is for 1% to 3% of a portfolio, a standard. These sovereign wealth portfolios look like this, no more than 20% in any one sector, no more than 5% in any one name. So again, speaking from an investor's perspective, Kevin O'Leary is saying they want Bitcoin. They understand Bitcoin because it is uh, the most popular cryptocurrency in a lot of ways. It is the one in the spotlight. And so, you know, as I've mentioned on this channel a lot of times before, the king cryptocurrency, you can never go wrong with Bitcoin, the king. And, uh, you know, Kevin O'Leary does actually mirror what Raul Powell says here a little bit when he says, if Ethereum becomes the default platform for other digital assets, that will help with uh, an investment in Ethereum. So he is saying right now, everybody's interested in Bitcoin, but the um the developments okay the real world adoption those are going to be the things that uh, perhaps sway investors to purchase other cryptocurrencies he says when you ask them uh if you could buy any digital asset which one would it be and at what allocation it's about 50 basis points uh, on the low and then 300 basis points on the high end and 99 percent of the time they say bitcoin because that's all they know so kevin o'leary even just stating it flat out that's all they know O'Leary adds that the sovereign wealth funds are just waiting for a clear regulatory framework before diving into Bitcoin. And he says, here's the quote, it's going to take a while for that demand to come in. And I think it would be number two. And they certainly like USDC and they love Solana and Polygon. Interesting how he, as well as Raul Paul, just uh, mentioned Solana here again. You go down the list based on market cap, I get it. But right now, if we had policy on Bitcoin, I swear to you that the price would be $60,000 in two weeks. So a few interesting things here. Uh, Kevin O'Leary also mentioning Solana, as did Raul Powell when he said down here, uh, that's the safest allocation that happens to be ETH. Now other early stage tokens, whether it's Solana or AVAX or whatever, are earlier on the adoption curve. So uh, Raul Powell also mentioning Solana. And as just a little sidebar here, Solana is one of those uh, WEF recommended cryptocurrencies, as mentioned in their 2021 report. But back to O'Leary, though, Bitcoin is the one in the immediate term. But perhaps as more of these projects develop with adoption, we are going to see more money, more dollars from investors, big money reallocate into these particular projects. So... What I'm getting from this, what I'm gleaning from this, Ethereum is uh, likely going to be a big play once they merge, but we know uh, Vitalik's track record, delays, 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 is it even going to happen in September of 2022 or not? Uh, also, these guys are both mentioning Solana as a popular blockchain. Uh, you know, Solana's got its issues. However, it is a World Economic Forum chosen coin. They've both mentioned it. The use case is there. But you know, guys, what's also rattling in my head, the fact that we also have XRP here on the list in the top 10, we know about the use case for XRP. We know that it's also one of the World Economic Forum chosen cryptocurrencies, but we also know Kevin O'Leary's thoughts on XRP, you know, considering it is wrapped up in a court case, he does not want to touch it. And I think that uh, speaks volumes for probably many institutional investors. However, once we get that regulatory framework, okay, as Kevin O'Leary mentions here, uh, uh, sovereign wealth fund managers are just waiting for a clear regulatory framework before diving into Bitcoin specifically. But if we can extrapolate, this is obviously going to extend to other cryptocurrencies in the space. And once we finally get a verdict from the SEC lawsuit, boom, that's when we're going to see a huge spike. Now, I know, uh, you know, a popular opinion here is that uh, we're not going to see a verdict until uh, early 2023. I believe that was mentioned a few months ago. Uh, who was it? Was it Stuart Alderati who uh, mentioned it? I believe it was uh, Alderati. Yeah, it was over here. Uh, it now looks like a resolution will come in 2023. Ripple General Counsel Stuart Alderati said in a tweet, and I believe uh, Jeremy Hogan and others have also uh, echoed that sentiment. But guys, again, that does fall in line 
with where we are seeing crypto moving right now. Okay, this would be quarter one. 2023 give or take and if we get a verdict on the settlement somewhere in here will institutional buyers change their game plan realize that there's another digital asset out there in the top 10 that is going to make waves raul Powell and kevin o'leary both think that the ethereum merge is going to influence institutional money to flow into that one particular project i don't see how a positive xrp result would not mean the same thing. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.